Now, is that de- is that like a developmental thing? Like, has that developed over time? Because you've been, how long have you been doing photography? Thirteen. Thirteen years. years. <laughs> so, like, is that like something that you've developed over time? Like, you've just learned to relax and not stress out over some little things. I think so. Yeah. It, when you get this far in, like, you kind of have to really reflect on what it was like in the beginning Mm -hmm. Um, because like so much of it just gets blurred in the hectic day-to-day because from the gate I have been a booked photographer Mm -hmm. and I think I mean I've always had things that I was really worried about as far as wanting to make sure my clients were happy but I just remember being like 15 16 and my teacher asking me or telling me, good job, you did rule of thirds. And I was like, what is rule of thirds? I did not know what any of the technicalities What is rule of thirds? So rule of thirds is when your subject is on the third. I, I, see, I'm not good at technical. Yeah, I'm like, sure. So it's basically like off-centered. Um, so like, say I'm taking a picture of this tequila glass. Um, the tequila glass is in focus on this side of the plane and this side is open. So, um, for instance, I just did a shot for one of my clients that owned Cigar Lounge, and they wanted rule of thirds because they could put content on that open space. Ah, yes. So, but I didn't know that at 14, and I still, when I'm shooting, like, I don't think of those things while I'm shooting. So, you started when you were 14? 14. And you said you had a teacher. What, where do you, like, that's not like like something you could take in high school or nothing. No. 14 is eighth grade, ain't it? Um, well, so my birthday was in June, so I was a freshman. Um, and so, oh, so you were young for your class. Yes. I was very young for my class. Okay. Um, my, I, it was, so my, my mom babysat, um, my whole life up until I graduated high school and I would just steal her camera and start taking pictures of the baby. She babysat the little toddlers and dress them up and curl Mm -hmm. her hair and things like that. And just like, just model. You didn't realize what you were doing. I had no idea. Yeah. I was just having fun, and um, that next summer, one of my friends was like, hey, you're getting really good at this. Do you want to come do pictures of me on the farm? And she paid me $35, and that was a tank of gas back then. Yeah. And I was like, I can't even drive. I'm rich, you know? Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. So um, I went, and I did it, and then it just kind of, like, kept going, and then I'll never forget when I met this teacher. Her name's Shonda Boyer. She's amazing. Um, she taught at Sullivan High School. I was in the hallway because um, one of our neighbors is really, we're really good friends with. Um, she let me come edit up there. And I was sitting in the hallway editing on Picnic. I don't know if you remember what Picnic no, was. No, never heard of that one. Um, so Picnic is what we all used in high school to put the words over pictures. Mm, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I do remember it now. Yes. I do remember. So, Did it, they didn't always have like the tag too. It always had to have Picnic in it. Oh, yeah. Unless that you paid like for the subscription. Yeah. And my mom got me the subscription. Ah. And I was... Thought Take I it was off all there. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So you did, you, your mom believed in you the whole time? The whole time. Like, whole time. Both Like parents. she's like, Caitlin, you time. need to do this. Absolutely. I, there's even a comment on Facebook that pops up where um, my mom said, it was on her Facebook status and it pops up every once in a while. And it said, um, does anyone know of any photography classes that are going around? My daughter's getting really good at this. I think there's something here. Mm-hmm. And. I'm not going to get emotional about it. I might get emotional. It just is. Like, she is the biggest supporter that I have. Like... That's awesome. From the get-go. So big. So big. Like, every podcast that I've had so far, we've talked about, um, you know, like, where they all started. And Mm -hmm. something that's very... The one common theme is they had... They had someone to believe in them. And I'm not saying... I don't... I mean... I don't know. That is like I don't know if I've always had someone to believe in me. I think that's a big reason why I pushed through a lot of stuff is because nobody was believing in me. So I'm like, I got to prove everybody wrong. Yes. You know, but I I do feel like my my parents were like, chase your dreams. Definitely. Mm -hmm. They never said that, but they were just, they didn't agree or disagree. They weren't like, they never pushed me like, Ryan, hey, this is what you need to do. But they're like, Ryan, do what makes you happy. Do what makes you. And that is exactly what both my parents said. They both were like, you need to find something that you enjoy doing because you're going to have to do this for the rest of your life more than likely. And that was also in a time where we didn't realize that we could change dreams. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was back 
you know, early 2000s. And it's crazy to me how fast time flies and mm-hmm. to think about the dramatic Yeah, the internet change. wasn't even that big yet. No, it wasn't. And oh my gosh, I remember, and, and it's funny because the internet wasn't that big. And when I was in high school, my page was getting viewed more than it does now because mm-hmm. of algorithms and mm-hmm. things like that. And competition probably too. Yeah. I so can we, can we talk about competition? Yeah, we can. 